You know that feel when you get an official copy of a game? An official Sonic game of that. Yeah, that feels amazing. So official, so authentic. I bet Yuji Naka himself burned this cartridge. Acquiring something that was actually issued by the original company behind that product is special. You cannot get more official than that. But then there's the other side of the business. Bootlegs, copies, fakers. Whether it's people looking for a quick bug or small and official companies taking advantage of the lax copyright laws, bootlegs are unavoidable. Sometimes bootlegs are produced by people living in places where there are no official retailers or associates of the company. Sometimes they're produced by pieces of shit, I don't know. But the world of bootlegs is fascinating, honestly. You can't help but wonder how something like this is allowed to be matter. So today we're going to be checking out some bootleg merch and games. We're going to start with the grandpappy of Sonic bootlegs, Sonic the Hedgehog 4. No, not that 4, though some might argue it's even better than that one. This game is legendary on just how odd it is. First off, it's on the Super Nintendo. You play as Sonic, of course, on your quest to save... Mario. The game goes for palette swap stage to palette swap stage, and you mostly face enemies from the original game anyways. What really brings this whole thing together is the ending. After you've saved a bunch of Marios, you're presented with this credit scroll. Whoa, you made it! Awesome! Okay. Now Sonic and Mario are good friends forever. Alright. And nobody can separate them. Alright, this is, this is getting kinda sus. Sonic loves Nintendo, Mario loves Sega. Getting real weird, champ! This game is actually a hack of Speedy Gonzalez, Los Gatos Bandidos, published by Acclaim in 1995. I'm mentioning that because it seems a lot of people know Sonic 4 instead of Los Gatos Bandidos. Speedy Gonzalez is replaced by Sonic, the little eggs or balls you collect are replaced by rings, and the mice you save are replaced with Mayro. The game was released in 1996 and developed by Twin Eagles Group, a Peruvian senior group that operated between 89 to 2002. What you might not know is that Sonic 4 isn't their only Sonic game. They also <coughs> developed Sonic the Hedgehog 2, which is just Sparkser with Sonic. They also develop a few other things, like Sex Tricks, a modified version of Tetris, uh -huh. a Street Fighter 2 hack, and a bunch of other stuff. But apart from Sonic 4, I think you'll recognize them for another thing they're responsible of. <laughs> Alright, that's it. Sonic 4 and Ronaldinho Saucer? Twin Eagles groups just achieved meme status. I proved the shit out of that meme, Knuckles. The cartridge and box uses the same artwork from Sonic 3. Just slap that 4 in there and you're set to go. I gotta say though, it's a pretty big departure from the original trilogy. Yeah, not as much as this though, but speaking of sequels, we have Sonic the Hedgehog 5 for the Game Boy. Oh man, now that's a recipe for success. Apparently it's Sonic 3D Blast 5. It utilizes shots from the opening of 3D Blast and an absolutely haunting Sonic and Knuckles title screen theme. Unlike Sonic 4, this is not a hack, it's actually an original game using crushed acid from other games like Sonic & Knuckles. As you start the adventure, the game straight up sucker punches you with atrocious audio. I'm not going to call this music. <laughs> Apparently, according to the bootleg games wiki, it's Angel Island Zone Act 1, but I cannot hear it at all. The game only has 5 stages, all based off of previous stages from other games, like Act 1 is Green Hill, Act 2 is Flying Battery, Act 3 is some sort of Spring Yard, and so on. The game was a gift from Macon Soft, also known as Young Young, developers from either China or Taiwan. The group was active between 97 to 2011, pretty long for these sort of uh, companies. They mostly focus on Pokemon hacks, Pokemon Adventure being their most well-known one. They also messed with Mega Man, Donkey Kong, Digimon, but it's the Sonic thing we're here for, because they continue the franchise! Sonic Adventure 7 and Sonic Adventure 8. Now, don't get too hyped though. These aren't sequels, they're just revisions or updates, sort of a new version of 3D Blast 5. Adventure 7 was just a modification for the Game Boy Color, and aside from changing some sprites, it adds nothing new. Sonic Adventure 8, however, is a completely different story. It changes some of the stages orders, Oh wait, did I say different? Oh, sorry, I meant the same fucking thing. We did a little Final Fantasy here, and we totally skipped Sonic 6. Now you might think that there's no such thing- oh, of course there is. A prequel to Sonic 06, Sonic 6 was developed by a group known as Sonic World, again, for the Game Boy. 
Just like Sonic 4, this one is a hack of Speedy Gonzalez game for the Game Boy. I mean, both games are about going fast, replacing Speedy with Sonic just makes sense, I guess. But the only reason to play this game is just to hear the Jarabe Tapatio in a Sonic game. The most notable modification of this game are the screens, though. Like the title screen, the ending screen, and the game over screen, which is that infamous sad Sonic phase which I covered in a previous video. Again, the game has five stages. Ice Zone, Desert Zone, Country Zone, Cheese Island Zone? So Cheese owns an island now? But the best Sonic stage of them all has to be stage 2. <sighs> And yet they pick Sky Sanctuary for generations. Sadly, I couldn't find a lot about the people behind this bootleg, but man, isn't that a wicked YouTuber name? Speaking of wicked, Super 2 Sonic, would you look at that fucking artwork though. Super 2 Sonic is a hack of Pokemon Platinum. Oh, <laughs> sorry. I mean, Pokemon Platinum. Yeah. It's a pretty bizarre hack. It's a side-scroller with actually nice-looking Game Boy version of the Sonic Advance sprite, indicating that this game was released after 2001 at least. The music is... Wait, wait, is that fucking Lambada? It sounds like it. I mean, it's actually the boss team for Parcel Star, which is based off Lambada slash Choranda Se Fue. Okay, we got Mexican, Bolivian, and Brazilian Sonic. Why stop there? Let's see if we can go even more Latin American. This bootleg was made by Syntax in around 2001 or after. Syntax was a PC developer that started producing unlicensed games for the Game Boy and Game Boy Advance after settling in China in the early 2000s. Syntax released over 130 games for the Game Boy. Well, not released, of course, everything is questionable with companies like this. Some other games include Digimon Reskins, Pokemon Reskins, Donkey Kong Reskins with, oddly enough, a pretty awesome title, Donkey Kong 5 The Journey of Overtime and Space. Now that's an epic adventure I want to dive into. Alright, time to check out. Okay, this one is unavoidable. We have to talk about the other grandpappy of bootleg Sonic games. This is Somari, made by Homer Team sometime in 1994. This one is rather infamous, as the actual development and release is shrouded in mystery. The game uses assets from the Genesis version and the Master System version of Sonic. You just smash those two together, sprinkle some of that poor programming, and boom, you have an incredibly difficult game that can barely be beaten. Surprisingly enough, the game has all the zones from the original game, except from Scrap Brain, after you beat Starlight, you're just sent straight to the boss. Now, who the hell made this? Hummer Team was a company that ran from 92 until 2010. Jesus, just think about it. 11 years ago, we were still living in a world with Hummer Team around. I have to admit though, I kind of have like a soft spot for Hummer Team. They developed these strange Street Fighter 2 and Mortal Kombat 2 ports for the NES, which I absolutely remember playing 20 years ago. Yeah, they were shit, but so was I, so we were meant for each other. Say, you know about this little indie company called Nintendo? Somehow they managed to get a bunch of characters together for a small project and call it Super Smash Bros. The second Super Smash Bros. game came out in 1999 for the Nintendo 64, and after the third game released in 2001, the franchise never looked back. Oh yeah, didn't you know? N64 Smash Bros. is actually a sequel. To what, you ask? Well, to World Heroes 2. We don't talk about World Heroes 1. This is a fighting game for the NES and has a great roster of different franchises, just like Smash. We got Mario, Sanok, Ryu, Voser, Leonardo, Goku. This was back when Nintendo had the balls to include Mai in Smash. Not gonna sugarcoat it, this game is ass, as you might expect. The control is incredibly stiff, the AI is straight up cheats sometimes, but it's kinda cool to see all these characters unofficially together. Kinda like a Mugen or an illegal party during the times of COVID. But they look odd. I mean, of course they're gonna look odd, it's a bootleg. I mean, Mario looks more like Captain Lou Albano as Mario. All of this magic was created by Konisoft, a company that operated between 93 to 98, in either Hong Kong or Taiwan. They would sometimes go under Yokosoft as well. They mostly focus on fighting games, but they tried their hands on other games as well. And it went as good as you would imagine.
That's it for games, I only wanted to focus on the classic ones, because honestly, most of the current bootleg games are just apps for the phones and shitty conversions, they are not as exciting to talk about as these old cards. Besides, I have a personal history with those games. Most of them ended up in my hands at some point during my childhood. For some reason, those Asian hacks would find their way to Argentina. That's one of the things that always fascinated me, how sometimes something can be really popular in one place and completely unknown in some others. For example, Looping the Third is a very popular Japanese franchise that's been going on strong since the 60s, and it's almost completely unknown in America. But for some reason, it's incredibly popular in Italy, so much so that the Ford animated series, which takes place in Italy, premiered in the Italian channel Italia Uno before releasing in Japan. How is that possible? Another one in Latin America is how most of our nostalgic and loved NES games never really released in the US. We play things like Battle City, Devil's World, Puyan, Uncensored Ice Climbers. Ugh, fuck, I'm getting off track. Where was I? Oh, right. If you check my community tab, you'll notice that I like uploading bootleg figures I found around town. But that's not enough, you know what? Let's take a trip. I'm going to take you straight into the mouth of the beast. We're going to take a look around town and see what awesome Ceylonic merch we can find. So I decided to leave the cave and explore the magic world of unofficial merch. My first stop is this lovely store filled with amazing figures for the whole family. Oh my god, I didn't know love could take physical form, just look at this beauty. Shadow and his neck, sonic decolor shoes and ultra wide smile, holy shit. Knuckles' classic white shoes, this is just incredible. However, since I'm poor I cannot afford any of these talismans. I love how the back of the box has all this mishmash of characters and shows figures that aren't the ones that you're holding, real classy. Oh hell yeah! Sonic and his blue arm twin brother? I know a certain guy who has a bone to pick with you and your blue arms. Forget the arms though, look at his hand, so twisted, ugh. That tail looks like he's seen some shit, man. Let's move on to the next one, shall we? Let's see, what's going on in this neck of the woods? Oh, awesome! Funko! Okay, no, sorry, I can't even joke about this. Funko Pop sucks. Even the original ones, I just can't stand them. Now for this one though, we have quite a selection. We have Super Sonic, Red Hot Sonic, No Glasses Super 2 Sonic, and Terios. Alright, solid lineup. You know this franchise called Sonic? Did you know that it's actually a ripoff of Silonic, right? What the fuck is this? First off, the artwork is all over the place. Mania Knuckles, Wave, Sonic, Wisps, Tails. Nice. Alright, how about the actual figures though? Knuckles' model looks alright. Not too bad actually. Can't say the same about the colors though. Shadow looks awful. The eyes are so messed up, it kind of reminds me of that Rouge glitch from SA2. Again, tells up scenes on shit. And... Blue Shadow. Oh, we have Boom Sonic, Amy, Tails and Stick, but regular Eggman. Ooh, so close. Let's see how... Holy shit! Shadow? Is that you? What have they done to you, buddy? Can't have your Sonic bootleg merch without some plushies. And oh boy, we have a bunch of those. These are the last ones I can find, and in the end, it seems that it wasn't Sonic Skateboard, it was Sonic Soccer. Well, what have we learned here? That bootlegs are mean materials, yeah. But sometimes it's the only kind of exposure some people will have to a franchise. I mentioned this before, but here we didn't have an official Sega retailer. We relied mostly on bootlegs and reproductions for everything. So yeah, the old Sonic 1 card that I had for my Genesis 20 years ago might have not been original, but it was all I had, it's all I could ever have back then. Maybe I wouldn't be here talking about all this shit if it weren't for that cartridge, but who knows. Bootlegs are unavoidable, and we will always have cheap copies or hacks for games. But luckily, hacks have really improved over the years. But sometimes it's just nice to stop, take a break, and look what you have behind you. Till the next time, stay safe boys.